Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for being with us today in the house of the Lord here at Have Bible. We'll travel uh, regardless of what location you're at. Let's raise our Bibles and ask the Lord to bless his word, Lord God, as we hold your holy word in our hand, Lord God. We ask you to bless it, Lord God, and let it come alive in our hearts today, Lord God, and let us let it uh, and permeate our hearts, Lord God, and we speak this, 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 this love of Jesus, Lord God, off our lips and glorify you with our actions in Jesus' name. His church said amen, amen and amen. Somebody say hallelujah as you praise the Lord. And wish somebody Merry Christmas if they're sitting next to you. We're going to do that ahead of time. And uh, yes, we are done uh, with Thanksgiving, and I ate way more than the law would allow. Amen. Yeah. Any other males out there ate as much as I did? Hallelujah. Amen. Time to hit the treadmill and give thanks to the Lord for that. Amen. Um, as we look today at our, um, at our scriptures that we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about an attitude of gratitude in mirroring the very image uh, that Jesus has set. He, he actually has set an example for me and you. He, he, is, he walked this, this, this planet that we call Earth. He's he walked this planet. He, he came, and we're going to be celebrating his birthday here pretty soon. Uh, so he could experience everything that me and you experience. He knows about pain and suffering and loss and all these things. But he was still able to continue to have a thankful and grateful heart. Amen? Today we're going to look at the uh, scripture out of Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 is where we're going to start. And we're going to start adopting uh, an attitude of gratitude, and I hope that you will understand that, uh, this, that when Jesus did this, he did this to leave not only behind uh, an example to follow, uh, but a way for me and you to achieve victory in our daily lives. We don't, we don't have to be defeated uh, by, uh, by, a, by a spirit of, uh, of being overcome or a spirit of depression or a spirit of... Uh, whatever it is that is conflicting uh, against the Lord. Amen? So he set this earthly example down here. In verse 25, it says, um, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's start out in John 11.41. Let's start out in John 11.41. Um, and so as we follow this example with Jesus here in 11.41, it says, so, so, they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. So we're going to take that verse and, and know that Jesus, his spiritual posture was always to not only thank his Father, but to make sure that his eyes were lifted up. And that's not, not only physical, but spiritually speaking, is to be lifted up in the Lord and, 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 to be, and to be under his wings and know that because he is my Lord and my Savior, I don't have to walk around with my head down, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. I don't have to be beat down. I'm not second place in, in, in Jesus Christ. I'm first and he loves me. Amen. Amen. So when he approaches this situation, he knows the first thing to do is to be thankful. The first thing to do is to be thankful. He approaches, he approaches this situation and we know what this is. He says, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. Verse 43, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, say it with me, Lazarus, come out. Verse 44, the man who uh, had died came out and his hands and feet were bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Or you may be reading the text that says, loose them grave clothes or something of that nature. What it is, is Jesus spoke. First of all, he thanked the Lord and he knew that his father heard him. How do we know that he, he knew that his father uh, heard him? Turn with me into Proverbs 15 and 29. Proverbs 15 and 29, and we'll make sure that we uh, dispel a myth uh, about what God hears and what he doesn't hear. In 1529, and I want to ask the ladies to put that up on the board, 
it says the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. It says the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. So me and you that are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ are in a right standing with God the Father. Somebody say amen. amen. But he does not hear the prayers of the wicked. Them are people who are not in, in, in fellowship with Jesus. Those are people who are not covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. Those are people who are not in a right standing with the Lord. And a lot of people think, you know, we're, we're dispelling this myth where everybody's going to heaven and we're all going to live happily ever after and this and that. Only people that live happily ever after are those who are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ and have their wickedness. You can applaud the Lord if you want to at that time. That, that, that's, that's, a, that's a myth that I, I would really like to dispel because I want you to call upon on the name of Jesus, amen, so that you can be saved. You know, um, I, was, uh, I was preaching at a revival yesterday, and, and I was blessed that, that while I was there with some other pastors, uh, there was two gentlemen that got saved uh, under the blood of Jesus Christ, so I applaud the Lord for that. So in that, um, in that we were all in there, and we were, it, was an, it was an all men's revival, and uh, we were praising the Lord, and we were, we were of one accord, and, and we were praising the Lord, and we didn't have all the, all the newfangled things that a lot of churches have, but we had a, a chapel where everybody came together, and everybody was loving the Lord, and everybody was praising the Lord uh, with every fiber of their being. You know, everything was just kind of stripped away, and it was us and Jesus, and, and God was exalted, and and we had a good time, and it was just a, it was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful, it, it, it was a great show of unity and, and, and thanksgiving. You know, there was, there was people that came in in a wheelchair, and then there was one gentleman that was right in front of me, and I'll never forget him. He didn't have a voice. He didn't have a physical voice. He wasn't even able to speak, but he praised the Lord through signing, and, and, and he just, and he, and he, he just, he, he thanked God, he thanked God with, with, with what he had, and, and maybe, that's where, maybe that's where we need to start today. Maybe we need to, to back that thing up just a little bit and be thankful for what God has given us. Can I say amen to that? We're just thankful that he's given us. And uh, there was one guy that gave his testimony, and it, he, ended up, he ended up being incarcerated. And, uh, and, and when the judge slammed the gavel down, he says, son, he says, you got nine and a half. I'll never forget the way the guy said it. He goes, you got nine and a half years. And, and he looked at the judge, and then he cried out to the Lord. He said, oh, Lord, he said, there is no way that I can do nine and a half. And you know what God said? He said, son, we'll do what you can, and I'll pick up the rest. Let that soak in, because maybe, maybe that's how we need to get our praise back on is is maybe you came in today, and I, whether you're here or O'Fallon or South Texas, where maybe you just didn't have a whole lot of praise off your lips, or maybe maybe you're out there and you're hearing me right now, but maybe you don't have a voice, and, and you're like that gentleman that sat right in the front of me, and I just loved his spirit. He couldn't sing with his voice, but he... He could, he could sing. He was making music with his heart. And then the manifestation is that he was signing with his hands. Amen. He was, he was praising God. And, and maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe you don't have everything. You don't have all, all the things, the latest fads and everything. God said, just bring to me whatever you got. He goes, and I'll pick up the rest. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. I hope somebody says amen to that. We need, we need to be thankful that God has given us something to be grateful for. Amen. And everybody's got sore feet and they're tired and this and that i thank god that i got feet I, I just thank god that i got feet it can start like that and that's what jesus is doing as, as we continue to look at his scripture today he's just thankful for the things that god has given him god his father say amen um back to this text and i'm, I'm here a little longer than i want and i'm going to read two more places in here he says he says, I knew that you always hear me. Um, he says, God, he said, Dad, he said, I know, I know that you always hear me. I know, I know, Dad, I know that you always hear me because I'm in a right standing with you. I, 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 I'm thankful that you hear me. You hear my heart. You know, my, my, dad, could, my dad could know if I was in a, a good mood or a bad mood just by my posture. And your parents would know that. They know that something's wrong, you know. And I think it's very important to have the, the proper spiritual 
posture as, as we're going before the Lord. We don't have to go with our head hung and everything. Let me tell you what spiritual posture looks like when, it, when it's not properly lined up. What it looks like is, uh, I don't know if you've ever told your kids that they can't leave the table until their plate is clean. Do they still do that? Here? Well, they did that at my house. And let me tell you what that looks like when your posture starts to get a little bad. We had broccoli, meatloaf, and like pancakes there and, uh, and sweet tea to drink. And you couldn't leave until your plate was clean. After a while, I was always the last one to leave the, leave the table. Well, we started out dinner like all good families do. We're all sitting there and everybody's happy to be there. Then after the parents leave and brother leaves and sister left because she, she choked the broccoli down. And my posture would sometimes become a little bit worse and I'd slide down in the chair. And then after a while, my posture would get so low that my chin was just like right at the table height like this. And my dad would go, come here, sit up, son. Sit up, sit, yeah, and I have to sit up. I had to get my spiritual posture right. He was, he, was, he was very concerned about my posture, amen? Just as your heavenly father is, he wants you to lift your eyes up today. Say, lift up your eyes. Yes. Praise God. So uh, let's go to the next scripture. I hope, that, I hope that blessed you today. So go to Luke twenty two seventeen. We're going to look at another place where, uh, where Jesus is thankful. Um, and actually, we, we won't be there very long. But I want you to take this with you. Luke twenty two seventeen, It says, And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. We're going to read that one more time. He says, And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. Now turn with me into 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll start with verse 23. It says, for I received from the Lord, this is the same thing, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, what is it? This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So Jesus is thankful uh, to God the Father for him having this Let's start off with this. He's thankful that he had this piece of bread. He's thankful that he had this piece of bread that he could offer up to his father. You guys ever get around Christmas time when you was like uh, maybe six or seven and you wasn't able to go out to the store? So you looked around your house and you had a, you know, a box here and, and you grabbed something out of your drawer or something like a marble and you handed it. Uh, to your parents for a Christmas gift. You kind of wrapped it up with newspaper, and your dad was so thankful for that. This, this is Jesus taking that bread, you know, after it's been tore off the loaf, and he offered it up to the Lord because this is what he had to give. And he says, he says he, and he gave thanks to the Lord that he had an offering. He had an offering to offer up to his father. And he was also thankful that through this Lord's Supper, which was the Passover Supper, that it was going to be an institution from this point on that all of God's children who are born again can partake in this. And this will be a weekly or quarterly reminder of the victory that they have in Jesus Christ. Amen. And for that, we ought to be thankful today. Amen. Um, as we go on to Mark 8, 6, we're talking about being thankful uh, in this content. I want you to take a look at this verse here. Um, and it's also shown in Matthew 15, 36, John 6, and 6, 11. Um, so out of Mark 8, 6, if we could put that up on the board too. Mark 8, 6. And it says, these are just a few that I, I just picked out about how Jesus always had the attitude of gratitude. Let's say that together, an attitude of gratitude. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples and set before the people, and they sat them before the crowd, and they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these all should be set aside before them, and they were satisfied, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full, and they were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. And and immediately, last verse, and immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Galatathuma. Um, so here, here's the deal here. Jesus was thankful to God the Father because he took, this, he took this offering, and it was just a little bit. 
Maybe that's all you got. Maybe that's all you got to offer people when, 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 when they come over to your house. But offer that up to the Lord and watch God multiply that. Watch God multiply that blessing. And as soon as you offer that up and you say, hey, all I got is bologna and all I got is, uh, you know, whatever the case. Or maybe I got a, you know, some pie or all I got is Kool-Aid. And you'll find out the people that you invite, they'll bring something. Amen. And then the next person you invite, they'll bring something. They'll bring something. And you'll put this all together and you'll watch God multiply this and turn this into a, a supernatural blessing. When you'll take, amen, when you'll take your natural and God's super and you get them together, you have supernatural results. And what Jesus did in this case, what Jesus did in this case is he offered this up to the Lord. He offered this up to the Lord and he knew that God was going to multiply this. He knew in his heart that God was going to take care of this. And you ever, you ever get before the Lord and go, I don't know how you're going to work this one out. I don't know how you're, I don't know how you're going to take care of this one, but I'm going to offer it up to you, Lord, and I need you to do something very supernatural with this situation. I don't know how you're going to, I don't know how you're going to make these ends meet. I don't know how you're going to, how I'm going to make these bills get together, but we've never been able to make them bills. We've never been able to make them bills. Well, then, then you do what you can and then just believe that God's going to come in here and do the rest. Don't just not do anything at all. That's not, that's not pleasing to the Lord. You just offer up what you can and God will do the rest. Amen? He'll, see, he'll supernaturally come into that place. It's like that pastor saying, oh, Lord, I can't do nine and a half. God says, well, do what you can. Turn with me into Colossians chapter 3. And this is and this will be the this will be the, the heart of the message today. And we've read this before, but I want to bring this back to remembrance to you today. It says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse two, set your mind on the things above. Say the word set. Say set. set. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Say amen. amen. So as we look at this word set, this, this word set, and this is actually, actually, this is what I preached down at the revival, so I'll, I'll preach it here, and I know it'll do the same thing here. So today, you and I need to set. Set means to put in a particular place. You have to put your mind in a particular place and put it on the things above. We have never lived in a time in the United States where so many people are so distracted about so many things. Amen. You can set your mind on the worldly things or you can set your mind on the godly things. So today you and I need to set our minds on the things of Jesus. We need, to set, we need to set our minds on the things that, that Jesus speaks about, that he teaches about, that he tells us to do. The commands, these are, this book is made up of, of commands and laws, and without it, we have complete anarchy down here on planet Earth. Amen. Rise up with me. Last two verses will come out of Colossians 2. Verse 6 and 7, here it is. Listen. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. When he says, so walk in him, or be in him, or, or whatever you're thinking here, what this means is, is, is walk like, walk like Jesus. Thank God like Jesus, and talk like Jesus and love like Jesus, and, and hug like Jesus, and high five like Jesus, and act like Jesus, and, and spread joy like Jesus, amen. Walk in Jesus this way, and here's the last verse of the day. Rooted and built up, say built up, built up. in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Abounding in thanksgiving. That uh, Abounding means to be in large quantities. We are to thank the Lord in large quantities. What for? Because I have salvation. Because I'm healthy. Because I have feet. Because I have hands. Because I have a voice. And right now today, I want to challenge you. 
wherever you're at. If you're in this sanctuary or sanctuary at O'Fallon or South Texas, I want to challenge you to find something that you're thankful for right now. And I want you to close your eyes and, and hold that for just a second. I want you to close your eyes and just hold that right where you're at. And, 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 just, and I want you to meditate on that for just a second and, and, just, and just tell the Lord right now, whatever that is that, that's going on in your mind, that, that you're going to abound in thankfulness right now. Just say, I thank you, Lord. I just thank you for that, just wherever you're at. I thank you for that. And I'm going to ask the deacons to come, uh, come up here right now, and I ask the, the praise team to come up here, and I'm going to ask you guys to do something here. Very supernatural. Very supernatural. If we are to abound in thanksgiving like the Lord wants us to, he also wants us to act on it. Now, if there's something here today that you are, you are extremely thankful for, I want you to come to the altar and just thank the Lord for that as a church together. As, as God moves upon your heart, I want you to, I want you to just raise your hand and, and just say, I'm thankful for that. And I don't even know what that is. You don't have to voice that out right now. Just, and and let, me, let me give you a few examples right now if your hand's raised right now. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for my children. I, I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for my Sunday school. I, I, I'm thankful for my school. I'm, I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the families in this church. I'm thankful that I have a loving and gracious heart. I'm thankful that God saved my soul. I'm thankful that I have a home. I'm thankful that I have running water. I'm thankful that I have a furnace and heat. I'm thankful that I have air conditioning. I'm thankful that I have a car. I'm thankful for all these things. And if your hand's raised, I want you to move right now and come down to the altar of the Lord and just give him thanks. Just give him thanks. This is the time where you put your, your action with your speech. I'm thankful for what he's done on the cross at Calvary. I'm thankful that when I die, I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. I'm thankful that I have a family who loves me. I'm thankful that I live in a free country. I'm thankful that I have salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that I got a healthy pregnancy. I'm thankful that I got another opportunity. I'm thankful and I'm gracious that I'm here today and I'm praising God and I'm thankful that when I leave here, I'm going to have another opportunity to tell people about the love of Jesus. I'm thankful that, that, that God is so good that he's given me this, this thing that's in my heart called love and I, can, and I can spread it and I can expand it. One more thing. This will be this will be the last. This will be the last time we talk about thanks and giving, and then we're moving on into to the Christmas uh, light of the world. As the, as I thank the Lord today that I have salvation through His Son Jesus Christ. Maybe today you came to the altar, and you're not sure today that 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 if I was to die, that I would go to to heaven or not say I, I i need to be saved if that's you raise your hand say i need to be saved by the love and the blood of jesus christ i need to be saved that's me i'm i'm thankful i'm thankful that that i've got this opportunity to today to be saved to be born again i'm thankful i raise my hand and i want you to save my soul just raise your hand and just pray with me pray this prayer whether you're here or o'fallon you're out there in uh, south texas or westport right here lord jesus i want you to save my soul i know that i'm a sinner and i know that you died on the cross for me at calvary and by the blood that you've spilled on the cross at Calvary, Lord God, is sufficient for my sin issue. It's the, it's the atonement for my sin issue. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior, Lord God, and will follow you all of my days until you come back to get me. And I know from this point on, my salvation has been sealed. For it's in your name, dear Jesus, that I pray and I receive you as such. Amen. Or maybe today, right now, you said, yeah, I want to be at the altar, wherever it is, and I, and I need church membership. I'm thankful that I got a church that still believes in the Great Commission and, 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 and that his church needs to get out there and go and grow, and I want to join this fellowship, or, or that's me, I, I want to join this fellowship, or I need, or I need healing. I need, I need God to heal my, my physical body or heal my mind. I want to raise my hand to the Lord, and that's me. I need prayer. I need somebody to pray for me right now. Or I just simply need to come here at the altar and repent. Whatever it is, trust Jesus and be thankful for what God has done on the cross. For it's in his name, his church said amen. And amen.